And is there anybody here who's ever found yourself tied up and tangled up into something and you knew better? She was taking advantage of you. He was taking advantage of you. They were taking advantage of you. And yet you waited and waddled in confusion and chaos so long until dysfunction became functional. Abnormal became your new normal. And messy became your preferred mode of operation. And because because you allowed so much to happen to you, you could no longer look yourself in the mirror because you didn't recognize the person that was staring back at you. Amen. The word of the Lord today is found in the book of James. James, the first chapter. I put a preaching calendar out at the beginning of every year and I always tell our ministers and um, Sister Marnice and those who need to have the calendar, I always put an asterisk by it saying, this could change based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this month we weren't going to do signs and wonders, but, but God just pressed upon my heart that we need to spend this month talking about the power of the word. Amen. So James, the first chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. New Living Translation reads as thus. Understand this. I'm sorry, it is the custom of the house that we stand if you are able uh, to read the word. And do me a favor, pray with me. Pray with me. Father God, it's preaching time, Lord. And as you've done so many times before, God, I pray for a fresh anointing. Lord, as I decrease and you increase, Lord, let your people see none of me and all of thee. God, my prayer is that when you have finished speaking today, that your name be glorified, that your people are edified, that the preaching assignment is satisfied. Holy Spirit, speak to me, speak through me, for I am prepared, I'm ready, and I'm willing. I claim the moment and mantle of preaching with power and boldness. God, I have some thoughts written down on this paper. Uh, but God, I ask right now that you would send your Holy Spirit to breathe upon it, Lord, that we would forever be changed and that we would not be the same. Use me, Lord, for your glory. God be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. James, the first chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. The New Living Translation reads as thus. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You, may, you must all be quick to listen. Mm -hmm. Can I take my time and read this slowly? You must, be, you must all be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to get angry. <laughs> Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls here it is but don't just listen to God's word you must do what it says otherwise you are only fooling yourself for if you listen to the word and don't obey it's like glancing at your face in a mirror you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard then God will bless you for doing it I want to lift up verses 23 and 24 for the purposes of preaching for if you listen to the word and don't obey it's like glancing at your face in a mirror you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. For the moments we have together, I want to preach with this thought in mind. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose yourself. Before you take your seat, ask, tell your neighbor, neighbor, can you see yourself when you walk away? Find another neighbor, ask him, neighbor, oh neighbor, can you see yourself when you walk away? You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Don't lose yourself. <clears throat> Family, I wonder this morning if there's anyone here uh, 
familiar with the anguish of losing yourself. The pain of realizing that you don't know who you are anymore. I hope you don't mind if I get up close and personal this morning, but is there anyone here who has ever experienced the pain of no longer liking the person you had become? And when you looked at yourself in the mirror, you no longer recognized the person who was staring back at you. Can I talk this morning? You have put yourself through so much and you have tolerated so much. Uh, but more than that, your relationship with God that you once cherished and valued was on the rocks as well. Do I have any unashamed company in the building this morning who will declare there is no feeling worse than being out of the will of God? I wish I had some real folk. Uh, I just wish I had a few more on this side. This the holy side? Okay, all right. Uh, I, I, is there anybody here this morning? who can say that there is no feeling worse than being out of the will of God. And beloved, I'm here to declare that it is a tragedy when believers lose themselves in the world and they forget the word of God that has been deposited in their hearts. That is the point that James is making in our text today in his poignant and powerful missive to the 12 tribes of Israel. James is telling his countrymen to not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word as well. To not just listen to a great sermon and a great hoop, but to actually act upon what the sermon invoked you to improve upon and here it is James goes on to say that upon hearing the word of God if there is no action then we are just fooling ourselves by thinking we are doing something and many of us have been there before haven't we to hear God's word laid out for us in spoken form to be moved to move but ultimately there is no action brother James informs us in his letter that if we listen to God's word and do not obey it it is as if we are looking ourselves in the mirror we see ourselves and forget what we look like when we walk away <clears throat> family may I suggest that in the body of Christ there are some faceless people walking around here Lord, help me to bless your people. Is there anyone here who has ever found yourself tied up and tangled up in something and you knew better? Is this thing on today? I said, is there anybody here who's ever found yourself tied up and tangled up into something and you knew better? She was taking advantage of you. He was taking advantage of you. They were taking advantage of you. And yet you waited and waddled in confusion and chaos so long until dysfunction became functional. Abnormal became your new normal. And messy became your preferred mode of operation. And because you allowed so much to happen to you, you could no longer look yourself in the mirror because you didn't recognize the person that was staring back at you. I start by today to tell somebody that we were created in the image of God. And it's hard to look at the craftsmanship of God in the mirror and not feel something. Because we are his creation. We were wondrously made. So here's the setting, family. If you read the text carefully, in essence, James is cautioning the believer against showing out. Can I say that one more time? Uh, James is telling those of us who profess to be Christians, profess, and followers of Christ that there are certain behaviors that are expected of the believer. <clears throat> and the behavior is simple. To not look like the rest of the world. It's okay, I've already come prepared to preach in silence today. I preached it yesterday to myself. See, the silence comes when we know that our behavior this past week, the things we said, the things we did, 
the anger we display and the fire that we gave to those who we lit up. Yeah, I, I know, I, I know. Looks nothing like how the word of God has taught us to conduct. Now I said, would you at least give pastor about six amens in the house? Stand tall, bro. In fact, James says so much before he even begins to talk about us not seeing ourselves when we walk away. James shakes the believer right off jump by reminding us that we are to be quick to listen and slow to speak. So I was working on this, Judy. I said, could you imagine a day? Could you imagine having to go through a day, Bill, um, when you couldn't talk, but you were forced to listen? My God. Freddie, you couldn't say anything. <laughs> But you were forced to, could you, oh, y'all, y'all like, God, don't ever take my voice away. Lord, please don't take, can you imagine having to endure a day when all you could do, Byron, is listen? Imagine if you got a shock every time you, But then James says, human anger doesn't produce the righteousness that God desires. James encourages us to get rid of all the filth in our lives that has us bound. And here's a word that kept jumping out at me this weekend. And humbly accept the word. Here it is, that God has planted in our hearts. And just a spiritual side note for someone today. God help me. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Being in church all your life is not something to brag about if you don't have any word in your heart. Can I say that? I wish I had about three of y'all that'll back me up today. I said being in church all your life, uh, that ain't a calling card. Uh, that ain't something you brag about uh, if you don't have no word in your heart. How you gonna tell somebody you have been in church all your life and you fallen to peace, you fallen to pieces out here cause God ain't gave you your breakthrough yet. How you gonna tell somebody I've been in church all my life, I've been on the battlefield for Jesus, working and I'm not tired yet, but you don't have no word in your heart. James goes on to use the analogy that being full of God's word and yet not acting on what you are full of will in turn cause us to forget who we are. Better yet, it will cause us to not recognize who we are. Brandon James is so descriptive in his analogy that he says it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and you forget what you look like. So family, that's the breakdown of the background and the setting of the situation. So what is the text teaching us today? Family, James forces all of us to ask this question. How can we keep the word of God in our hearts and safeguard ourselves from losing ourselves in the world? Beloved, I'm ready to give if you're ready to receive. If we're going to remember who we are, then we must first remember whose we are. And to keep from losing ourselves, we must, here it is, adjust our attitude. Okay. <clears throat> Family, I've discovered that so much of what we do in life and how we react to various situations in our lives is directly associated with our attitude, especially towards those situations. People of God, attitude is defined as a disposition, a feeling, or position 
regarding a person or thing. Did you just catch that? I said attitude is defined as a disposition, feeling, or position regarding a person or thing. And if we are honest right now, we would have to admit that there is a person or two or three <coughs> and a situation or four or five that has the ability to set us off. You know what, y'all be trying to 52, y'all be trying to fake me out. I'ma stop right here. I'ma hit the pause button, Sister Lucas, and we gonna come clean. Is there anybody in here that knows how to set it off? If you would just raise your hand. Okay, see this is the holy, let me. I said, is there anybody here, if you push the right button, you know how to set it off. I'm looking right at you. You, oh, come on, all right. Don't, don't, don't come in here and change. Leave here transformed, but don't come in here and lie. <laughs> Yesterday, someone up in here, look around. Yesterday, someone up in here lost it on somebody. It's the one that's not looking back at you. Amen, somebody. Yesterday, somebody up in here lost it. On, like, go, go ahead and shame the She said, it was me. It was me, Pat. It was me. Yesterday, somebody, you ain't by yourself, baby. Somebody else up in here lost it on somebody on yesterday. And family in our text, James shares with us a disciplined duty that many Christians struggle with. Listen to the text, Freddie, in verses 19 and 20. I underst understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Why? The answer is in verse 20. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Is there anyone here this morning who is not scared to admit that self-constraint of this magnitude is a discipline that may not come easy to you? I said family it's amazing to me uh, that we expect constructive communication uh, to take place with others uh, when we won't stop to even listen uh, to what the other person uh, is trying to say uh, and then when they are finished uh, we don't carefully consider our response uh, before opening our mouths uh, and letting it rip uh, you can be quiet on me if you want to uh, but I know I'm in the right place uh, at the right time uh, at the right moment here it is, I was in a training with pastors from all over the country on Thursday and Friday. And in one of our seminars, Brandon, we had to answer a 24 question assessment. And this assessment required us to rank ourselves on a scale of one to five. And one of the questions that I found was interesting was this. It said, I listen closely to the ideas of those who disagree with me. And one of my colleagues said, yeah, I listen closely and I still don't agree with why you disagree with me. <laughs> See, we laughing, but many of you are like, amen and amen, right? I listen. One, one, one of my colleagues said, the question said, do you listen? It didn't say, do you change? Family, James clearly tells us what the end result is for those who can't adhere to this level of self-control. They become angry. And family, our anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires from us. Righteousness meaning God's desired and preferred way for us to live our lives. And family, whether we like it or not, um, God expects us to conduct ourselves differently. Because if we don't, then we lose ourselves to the point where we don't recognize who we are because we know, because we don't know who we've become. Listen, a Christian who vacillates between hallelujah and I can't stand you this side. A Christian 
who fluctuates between lifting holy hands and laying hands. <laughs> they missed the memo. <laughs> Family, don't forget who you are. And don't forget what you look like. And remember that your attitude, listen to me, come here. Your attitude is what controls your entire day. I wish I had some help in here. Your attitude is what controls your entire day. For the Bible declares in 1 John 3 and 7, Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. I'm moving. Family, if we're going to safeguard ourselves from losing ourselves, we must adjust our attitudes. But here's the second thing the text is pointing out. Uh, we must alter our atmosphere. Judy, this ministered to me yesterday. Freddie, this, this, this point, Marsha, ministered to me yesterday. How many of you know that your atmosphere and surroundings can change your entire disposition? Have I got a witness? <laughs> write this down for me. Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. Your attitude will always struggle in an unhealthy atmosphere. Let me say that again. Your attitude will always struggle in an unhealthy atmosphere. Here it is. Um, raise your hand if you consider yourself to be a nice person. See, y'all a trip. Every hand went up on that. See, Sister Gates, when I say raise your hand if you're struggling with something, people sit on their hands, right? Raise your hand one more time if you consider yourself to be a nice person. Come on, come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I imagine that would be the whole room, even if you're not. Amen? Amen. So you consider yourself to be a nice person, but something happens when you pull into the office. You, you, you're a nice person, but something happens when your car hits the driveway of your home. Can, can I keep it real today? Uh, you're a nice person, but if something happens when you know you're going to be in the company of so-and-so. What happens, Pass? Oh, you already know. You feel the spirit of mean come upon thee. Amen, somebody. Uh, the spirit, the spirit of meaneth uh, has cometh upon me. Uh, you start talking in King James. The spirit of, of meaneth uh, has cometh upon me. Listen to the text in verse 21. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it, it being the word, has the power to save your soul's family. Please don't miss this critical piece in the text. James is saying before God's word can save our souls, we must first get rid of the filth and evil that surrounds our lives. My God, the filth and evil also known as sin. And this is how God gave it to me on yesterday. It doesn't matter how many scriptures I need you to hear me. It doesn't matter how many scriptures and inspirational sayings you post on social media it doesn't matter how many scriptures and Bibles you have in open view at your workstation and it doesn't matter how many sticky notes of scripture you have posted sitting around your crib if your environment doesn't match the scriptures then you just looking at a bunch of words on some paper preach me Daniels I think I will I need you to hear me family God's word uh, can't grow in our souls uh, if our atmosphere uh, doesn't produce good soil. Uh, can I say that one more kid? Uh, I said God's word uh, can't grow in our soul uh, if our atmosphere doesn't produce good soil. 
Can I continue to share my devotional moments with you? Here it is. Uh, as I was working on this message yesterday, Deacon Hart and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that many of us are living our lives with the arrogance of believing that 99 and a half will do. We have hoodwinked Marsha ourselves into believing that in the eyes of God, some of the time is acceptable and adequate. And most of the time is better than nothing at all. Preach, man. We've duped ourselves into believing that the sanctification of our lives is no longer warranted for us to be right with God. Sanctification is defined as to make holy, to set apart as sacred or consecrate. And I'm here to declare that you can't set yourself apart if you are so deep in the world that you can't get into your word. You can't set yourself apart if you are so deep in the world that the word can't penetrate your heart. Uh, for many of us, uh, the atmospheres uh, that we currently abide in uh, are not conducive uh, to the watering of God's word. Uh, can I say that one more time? Uh, for many of us, uh, the atmospheres uh, that we live in uh, are not conducive uh, to the watering uh, of God's word in our hearts. Here it is. When we choose to stay in those type of environments, we find ourselves doing things we thought we had been delivered from. When we put ourselves in those environments, little we find ourselves saying things we have we thought we'd been delivered from. Uh, I wish I had I, I wish I had some believers that would raise their hand like they just said when I asked where you're nice. I wish I had some believers uh, that would raise their hand uh, and say there's been a time two or three uh, when you've been talking to somebody uh, and they brought up some words uh, that you ain't used uh, since Bush was in office. Uh, they brought up some words in you uh, that you ain't used uh, since Reagan's inauguration. Uh, they brought out some words in you uh, that you ain't used uh, since since let it was a gasoline we you. Freddie, the preacher, just keep it real today. There are times in my life, Freddie, when I say, woo, where did that come from? Oh, I'll just keep it real with y'all today. There are times when jokers can take you to some places. Have I got some real folk in the building? And they can take you to some places and you can say, I haven't. And this is how God gave it to me yesterday, Johanna. I'm feeling my help right now. God said, just because you stop cursing people out, that doesn't mean that you've been delivered from cursing. It just means that the atmosphere you've been hanging out in has allowed you to remember what you say when you say it. But if we drop you off in an atmosphere that's familiar around some folk that you don't like, we might say, who is this? Mama, there go that man again. We don't want you to have to go back. How many of you know that the right person in the right circumstance? can make you do some things and say some things uh, that you thought you had given up. Uh, and when we make the decision to remain uh, in these toxic atmospheres, uh, we will forget what we look like. If we linger in those type uh, of vitriolic environments, uh, we become trapped by the things we say. And when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we discover that we can no longer see the person whom we really want to be. Question family, I'm almost done. Who or what is adversely affecting your atmosphere right now? I'll give you a few seconds. Who or what needs to be cut off in your life right now so that you can once again look in the mirror and love what you see? 
Family, I've discovered that we need to learn how to love people from a distance. I know Marvin sung about it years ago. Distant lover. We need to learn. Oh my goodness. We need to learn how to love people from a distance. I'm not mad at you. May the Lord watch. But I'm sorry. May the Lord. I mean. I'm sorry. May the Lord watch between me and me. But it's something that you do. When people say to you, how come we don't hang anymore? Don't lie to them. Today, I speak over your life. Today, you have the courage to tell them the truth. I don't like how I feel when I leave your presence. How come we don't talk anymore like we used to? Don't lie. Tell them because I don't like how I feel about myself when I hang up with you. Well, what does that mean? You too good for me? No, it just, no, it just means I'm trying to elevate my language. No, it doesn't mean I'm too good for you. It just means that we're going on two different directions. It doesn't mean that I think I'm all that and I think that you're little. It just means that the values that once kept us together have become in value to me. They're not sequential. I can't hang out with you anymore because I'm trying to do uh, some new things in my life. Uh, have I got a witness in this place? Uh, oh, I know it's hard. Uh, so you can't raise your hand because uh, it sure is going to be hard uh, to let Ray Nathan go because uh, can't nobody do uh, what Ray Nathan can do. Uh, I know it's going to be hard uh, to let Pukisha go because uh, can't nobody do uh, what Pukisha can do. Uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, that if you put your trust uh, and your hope in God, uh, then God will feel every void that comes in your life and you will never have to worry about people who bring you down again I'm done so here it is if we're going to safeguard ourselves against losing ourselves we must adjust our attitudes we must alter our atmosphere. Here's the third thing I want to leave you with. We have to, Jason, amend our approach. Amend our approach. Family, I must tell you, yesterday I really began to ponder verses 23 through 25. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at yourself, at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and you forget what you look like. But if you carefully look into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Family, as I get ready to close this sermonic offering, let me leave you with this. If you don't have time and won't make time to study the word of God, then you are wasting precious time. See, you can't study God's word and still talk to your brother and sister with disrespect. Uh, I wish I had about four more of y'all. I said, you can't read the word and you can't study the word and, and still talk to your brother and sister with disrespect. You, you simply can't be full of God's word and hold on to a decade's worth of grudges. God, help me to close this. You can't be full of God's word and carry yourself with an arrogant aroma that says you don't care about what people say or think about you. You can't be full of God's word and not hurt when you hurt God's people. You can't be full of God's word and not give any consideration to how your words offend and affect others. And I'm on assignment to remind somebody that the blood has not lost its power, that the word has not lost its power, that prayer has not lost lost his power, uh, that deliverance uh, is still available, uh, that healing uh, is still available.
available uh, and if we're going uh, to hold on uh, to what God is doing uh, in our lives uh, then we must realize uh, that the word uh, is a lamp uh, unto our feet uh, and a light uh, unto our path uh, if we're going to remember uh, who we are uh, and whose we are uh, then we must remember uh, that in the beginning uh, was the word uh, and the word uh, was with God uh, and the word uh, was God uh, and therefore uh, we cannot be uh, enthralled uh, with just being hearers uh, of the word uh, but we must be uh, doers of the word as well uh, good day now y'all uh, and may the Lord uh, bless you real good uh, but before I go uh, is there anybody here uh, who can declare uh, that I will read uh, the word of God uh, I will let it uh, get in my spirit uh, I will let it uh, get in my soul uh, because it is the word uh, that has the power uh, to save me uh, it's the word uh, that has the power uh, to deliver me uh, it's the word uh, that has the power uh, to remind me uh, of who I am uh, it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, that I can do uh, all things uh, through Christ uh, who gives me strength uh, it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, that I've never seen uh, the righteous forsaken uh, nor received uh, begging bread uh, it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, that I can declare uh, and I can decree uh, whatever it is uh, I'm asking God for uh, it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, that I am uh, the head uh, and not the tail uh, I'm above uh, and not beneath uh, I'm the lender uh, and not the power it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, that my God uh, died uh, on an old rugged hill uh, and on the third day morning uh, he got up uh, with all power uh, in his hands uh, it's the word uh, that reminds me uh, on a dark day uh, that yay uh, I will be with you uh, always uh, even uh, until the end of time uh, this is uh, the word of God uh, I can have uh, what it says I can have uh, I can do uh, what it says I can do uh, I can be all uh, that it says I can be uh, I am a believer uh, and not a doubter uh, I I am uh, the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, I am above uh, and not beneath. Uh, this is uh, the word of God. Uh, heaven and earth uh, shall pass away, uh, but the word of God uh, shall stand. once you have the word in your heart God, Judy intended for nothing or no one to be able to snatch it from you but here it is Uncle Joe will tell you Where you plant and the environment and temperature says a whole lot about what your harvest is going to look like. Amen, somebody. Why is it that many of us are bringing outside plants? Why is it that we've reached a point in the Ann Arbor where it's time for us to bring plants that once sat outside on the porch inside? If they're going to have a fighting chance to live. I, I, I'm teaching better than you saying amen right now. We could leave the outside plant outside but how dare us wonder why you go and die? Be 
because the environment was not conducive to life. I'm trying to bless somebody today. And so what James is saying, and I know this is not going to be easy, because for many of us, we are so intricately tied in to toxic environments that we can't even figure out how to get out of it. But I'm here to declare today that the name, I speak, Lord. The names and faces that God placed before you during this message, it was not a coincidence. That was the Holy Spirit saying to you, I dare you to do something about this and see how God wants to bless you in return. Come on and bless the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone resting on their feet. Leaders are coming with their hands extended. We are about to begin what we call our pep rally. Our pep rally just simply means that we're about to start clapping, praising God for you and the spiritual decision that you will make today. So wherever you are, 